Whether you play the game or not, you're probably aware that CSGO skins are worth a lot of money. The reality is it's now a billion dollar industry with record sales happening every single year. But all of this money has attracted ripoff artists who are preying on those who don't know the value of their own skins and they're making an absolute shit ton off them. Everyone knows about these sharks, but for reasons we're about to get into, it's not that easy to stop them. Well, would you look at the time? It's that time of the video where I ask you guys to subscribe to the channel if you enjoy this video. Also leave a like and hit the notification bell. Look, I wouldn't tell you to do it if it wasn't worth it. You gotta trust me, I'm a random guy on the internet. Now, admittedly, I'm not the biggest CSGO guy on the channel. I think you know the name of the, the actual person, but the skin world in CSGO has always fascinated me, especially the darker side of it. So in order to tell this story properly, I spoke to some of the game's premier skin experts. They guided me through this whole underworld and even put me in touch with a victim of it. We're gonna get pretty into the weeds in this video, so I think it's probably best if we quickly run through the basics. Now, skins are texture cosmetics for weapons. Like a lot of games, they can be purchased in the form of crates, which you then unbox for a random skin. These crates can also be rewarded as random drops for playing games or for watching professional matches. Now where CSGO differs from other games, and it's a pretty big one, is that skins are tradable. Every skin is obtainable if you've got the real life cash to cough up for it. This feature was first implemented in 2013 as part of CSGO's arms deal update, which gave players access to 100 weapon skins. And in just two short years, the player base grew more than 13 times over, from 25,000 average players when the arms deal update was released to over 357,000 players by August 20th, 2015. Now, this wasn't a coincidence. It was skins. I don't think it's an exaggeration to say that skins kind of save CSGO at a time when its future did not look that certain. And I don't think I need to explain to you why CSGO skins became so popular. They look cool, you can pick up an opponent's weapon and kill them with their own skin, they're a status symbol, you know why they're sick. But their insane popularity has led to a skins economy that has exploded over the years. A CSGO weapons case, for instance, was worth about 30 cents in 2013. In June 2021, it reached just under $60. That's almost a 20,000% increase. In recent years, skins have even begun to sell for over 100,000 US dollars. The point is, this shit is massive and it's only getting bigger. But like flies to a pile of shit, the big money has also attracted sharks who are looking to make a quick buck of people who don't know the true value of a skin they own. They offer naive traders a low amount and then flip the weapon for a large profit. Now, obviously, it's easy to just blame all of this on bad people, but this may have all started the moment that Valve begun designing rare skins. I spoke to CSGO content creator Jesus, who explained to me just how the creation of skins may have led to the ripping off we're seeing today. It comes back to the way Valve designed skins. They actually designed skins specifically with um rare patterns and stuff like this in mind. I don't think they anticipated them being worth tens of thousands of dollars, but when they were designed, and the, the woman who designed skins has spoken about this, they wanted to have obscure rare patterns. That was a big deal to them. They wanted to promote like this trading ecosystem and have like different different avenues by which skins could be valued. And one of the one of the ways they really pushed that was with in particular the case hardness, which is what Zipple's talking about and where a lot of this scamming happens. Uh, they, they deliberately tried to create this market for obscure case hardened patterns, but because it's been just this wildly successful popular thing that they didn't anticipate with patterns worth you know, anything from $1,000 to $1.5 million, it's created this huge spectrum for what is essentially you know, industrial scale fraud to take place by a few sort of dodgy individuals. And these dodgy individuals trawl through skin databases looking to see who's opened a particularly rare case hardened item like a blue gem. 
For those of you that don't know, a blue gem is the name given to a randomly determined pattern on a case hardened skin that has a predominantly blue color on one side. They are extremely sought after and so extremely valuable, ranging from a few thousand dollars to estimates of over one million for the likes of a famous case hardened blue gem karambit. And that's not the only factor that determines the value of a CSGO weapon. If it has stat track, which tracks the total number of kills the owner has made with the weapon, that increases the value. The grade of a weapon can greatly affect the price, ranging from common to contraband, and then of course stickers can up the value even more. The thing is, the average CSGO player doesn't really know that much about the value of rare skins. The database prices are usually inaccurate, and the specific skin-to-skin -skin differences that pump up the value often require a trained eye to spot. And that is when the sharks pounce. They approach the owner of a rare skin and offer what seems like a good price, either with real money or with other skins that aren't worth as much as they say they are. And the problem with this kind of thing is that it exists in a kind of gray area. They aren't hacking anyone's account or stealing their skins. They're making a trade offer, which the owner can simply decline. Morally speaking, this is obviously pretty messed up. Innocent people are getting ripped off. Jesus explained to me that unfortunately, this may just be a symptom of the skins market in its current form. The nature of the market really allows unscrupulous actors to really exploit just a lack of information about what the true prices of certain items are and manipulate certain individuals into essentially giving up tens of thousands of dollars on, on, on a trade. So the issue is more sort of the opaqueness of the market and the way that can be exploited by people who have just objectively bad intentions. I also spoke to Zipple, a well-known content creator and skins expert, and during our conversation, one name kept coming up as an alleged shark, a trader named Tukav. Now, Zipple put me in touch with Sam, a young CSGO player who had been approached by Tukav after he opened up a weapons case with a stat track blue gem AK inside. Now, at first, he didn't even know it was a blue gem. He was just happy to get the AK skin that he wanted. It was a valuable skin, and it didn't take long for trade offers to start coming in from those who had been scouring the database. Sam then approached Zipple to see if he was interested in buying the AK. As part of their discussion, Sam said that Zipple had a valuation done on the gun by a friend, and the results came back between twelve dollars and $14,000. That information was then passed on to Sam. It was then that Sam started getting messages from two calf who was extremely persistent with his offers but after consulting zipple sam knew the offers were too low he was the one that was sharking me non-stop i remember he was sending me uh trade requests like non like every every like two weeks every no every week yeah every week he'd be like oh i'll give you this for that and then there was a point where i was talking to zipple and then he was like oh i'll give you 6k for it uh, PayPal and I was like I don't know if I really want to do that. When Sam told Zipple about the offers he was shocked. For him it didn't add up at all. So you can see here that Tukav sends an offer here for a hydroponic AK, a Huntsman Sapphire, uh, Huntsman Sapphire and Huntsman Ruby. All these items amount to around 3k dollars. And then on the other side you have the $12,000 AK where he's also asking for his M9 Slaughter and his gloves. So this is like a typical one where you know as I said Two calves would then probably ask, well, you can just send it without your combo and then hope that he will accept it. But because of the fact that he got help from someone that is not trying to take advantage of him, then he, uh, you know, he, he, he didn't do it. It took a while, but the pushy offers stopped. Sam told me that he knew Tukav's intention was to flip the AK for much more than he was being offered. With the help of Zipple, Sam ended up selling his AK to a legitimate trader for $10,000, a much more reasonable price. These sorts of sharks can target anyone who opens a case and gets their hands on a rare skin. But quite often you hear that the victims that fall prey to this have one thing in common, they're pretty young. They may feel pressured by the sharks to give up their skins cheaply and quickly because, hey, they're an adult. The sharks take advantage of that power dynamic to get what they want. And what's more is that even sharks are getting sharked. Zipple told me that in his experience, sharks are getting preyed on by even bigger sharks who flip the weapons for even bigger profits before they themselves are preyed on by even bigger sharks, if that makes sense. 
An item that was originally sold for a few thousand dollars can then pass up the chain to the top of the ladder where the biggest sharks are making tens of thousands of dollars in profit. So. What can be done about this? Well, as someone who was approached by an alleged shark, Sam doesn't really hold out too much hope for change. I don't think it can be fixed because, well, there's always people gonna be out there to like go and say, oh, I want this. Because it's just people being pushy. It's, it's not something the sea market fit, could fix. If they wanted to fix that, well, I mean, then it's not possible. No, like they can't. Don't get it wrong, this stuff isn't right by most people's standards. These sharks will distort, manipulate, and lie to get what they want. But at the moment, there's no rule against making pushy trade offers. There's no rule against making a shitty offer. In many ways, Valve has been like an absentee parent through all of this. They created CSGO skins, which then birthed a thriving economy, but now they're reluctant to step in and try and stop the rampant ripoffs that are taking place. And it can be hard to detect a shark because of this. Some of them will make an offer that isn't totally insane, but is a blatant ripoff to a trained eye. That way, if they ever get accused of being a shark, they can just say there was a difference in valuation. The less intelligent and greedy sharks will massively undervalue a seller's item in order to maximize profit, but this also makes them extremely detectable to the community. And this is what Jesus was alluding to earlier in the video. The opaqueness of the market is a big problem here. As long as people are uninformed about the true price of their skins and databases don't help them either, there will always be more knowledgeable people looking to rip them off. I asked Sam if he had any advice for people who are looking to trade their skins, and he simply said, patience. If you think you have something valuable on your hands, you need to just sit tight and wait for as many offers to come through so that you can figure out what the true value of it is. Sharks will be quick to make offers, gambling that you don't know any better in the beginning. I think one of the greatest tools to have against sharks is to have knowledge of them. Hopefully this video has helped you with that. And if your next skin is worth $20,000, you won't rush into anything too quickly. Oh, this is one of those moments where everyone freaks out because I'm not about to say premiere. Here we go. Oh, premiere, bruv. Oh, you got off to the premiere, bruv. Well, I didn't say that, did I? I just said premiere. I just said premiere. Oh, go, 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 premiere, bruv.